instructional video. I've really enjoyed putting these together. They're filmed in my own studio and I'm here with my pal Jess who is not only filming but she's editing and she's a wonderful director. She comes up with great ideas. And this particular video or DVD, what we're going to do is my favorite lessons. And over the last few years I've had two lessons that have been very, very successful. The beginners do as well as the people who are advanced. And it's really fun to go out and teach and send everybody home with a beautiful painting that they're very pleased with. Now, in the past, I've worked with the concept of breaking out into a white shape, sort of a commercial idea, but it's one that just seems to work for me. It's something I really enjoy. So taking this concept, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into the idea of working with grapes. Now, I've got another video out where we just do the grapes straight. But on this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the concept of breaking out. And not in a perfect rectangle, but in something asymmetrical. Maybe a narrow line and then, you know, another zig and a zag. So what we're working with here is, if you think of this as being the negative, this is the positive. So these are going to be all dark against a light background, and then these can go either way. They can be dark against light or light against dark. But it's a really very exciting concept to work with, and one I think you'll have a great time with. Here's some examples of some other pieces. Um, this one here is, is focusing mainly in just blue and yellow and green. Very limited palette. But I really like it. If you can imagine this in the right place, it would be a nice decorator piece. And uh, this is another little concept I'm going to work with. This is this idea of the intertwining branches. Last fall, I was over in France at this lovely convent, and they had a grape arbor in the backyard, and there were 100-year-old vines. And that was drawn on location, looking at the vines, the way they were twisting and turning. It was very exciting. So I'm going to work with that concept today in our demonstration. Here I've been painting these things all these years, and I don't even put branches on them hardly. They're just grapes and leaves. Now I'm into the branches. So this is the evolution. See, that's an old one. That's a new one. <laughs> so <laughs> that's an old one. <laughs> that's an old one. Because now I'm doing the branches too. It's just so fun. Now this kind of fun. This is the same piece, same colors, very close in range, but here I glued a piece of this fibered on roux over the top. So you can see it sets the color back several values, but it also adds this very soft textural look, very popular. And again, something I really love. I guess I've always liked texture and now to combine it in a painting is fun. Here you can see another great piece, this time in a very warm dominance versus a cool dominance, and again with the fibered paper on it. Here's one that doesn't have the fibered paper, but here now I was working with the concept of complements. So we've got the purple grapes and the yellow leaves, and then I harmonically went into kind of a turquoise to combine with the violet, because I really like greeny blues and violets together. So that was purposely designed to be purple and yellow. As you can see, some of the leaves absorbed more of the purple and became quite grayed down, but at least the ones in my focal point stayed <laughs> the intensity I was hoping for. This is, again, going back to a more traditional, just a simple square shape, simple breakouts. So you can make this as complicated or as simple as you'd like. This is the last example I'm going to show. Again, this is a full sheet now. I wouldn't recommend starting with a full sheet. <clears throat> this, uh, it was amazing how much time it took me to finish this, but it was really fun to do. And this one, you can see, has some gold spray on it. So when the wax paper and the leaves were on here, I took a can of metallic spray and just did a little bit of spraying right on top of it while it was still wet. 
and I like some of the golden tones that happen. And then this, this funny scribbly looking lines that you see, that was done with another gimmicky can of spray you can buy it at almost any store. It's called webbing spray. And it, I think it adds a nice little touch. I especially like it with the grapes. So we're ready to get started. The size paper that I've chosen is going to be the one-third of a sheet. So I've divided my sheet into one-third. So the final size that I'm going to work with is one-third, 10 by 22. And generally when I do this, I rip it the second one I make the second rip right away because if I if I set this aside, sure enough, I'll rip it the wrong way. And what my plan is, I'm going to design the painting on one, and I'm going to paint. Then I'm going to take it off of there and paint in this one. So I'm just going to start by designing with this one. So we're going to start with the major vine coming and weaving its way through the painting. And let's say it also comes down here and goes off the painting. And then, of course, I'm going to have one vine quite big. And they're very gnarly. So we're going to make it kind of thick. Like I say, I'm not sure. There's going to be leaves coming in here, too. Maybe this will branch off down here. And then I want to have another vine that's intertwining with this. And where might that come in? It could come on just about anywhere. So I'll cut, have it come over here, twist, go underneath, come over here, go on top this time, and it'll go underneath this time. Oh, it's got to go on top this time. <laughs> so now we'll give that some thickness, and I'm going to have this be kind of a skinny little butt. You can see how much fun that is. Already we've given quite an interesting flavor. And I have with me some leaves. Now these are actual grape leaves that I picked last summer. And the interesting thing is I, I put them in a plastic bag and then I sucked all the air out of them. So they were almost like vacuum sealed, zippered them up, and froze them. And with about 300 leaves, which is how many it takes for me to teach a class, all in there very compactly with all the air out of them. They, look at how nice and flat they are. Now if you went to pick these today, if it, if it weren't, uh, you know, winter time with the snow cover, <laughs> um, let's say you went out and picked these fresh, they would be very difficult to work with because they have, they're very, um, so much moisture in the leaf. They just simply curl and bend so you don't get good contact. But the frozen leaves are wonderful. So you can see what I'm doing now. I'm actually doing the design using the leaves. And I've got a variety of them, different sizes. Here's a cute little one. Maybe I'll have that. And the leaves actually come off up. They turn up. They don't necessarily hang straight down. You could have a leaf coming off like this, and it would actually be correct. So I do want some of these leaves to intersect with the vine. And I want some of them to come off of the vine. And I want some of the leaves to overlap one another. So it's kind of nice just to kind of play around here with uh, what feels comfortable. I think I can get by with one more. It's quite a few. I think that might be enough. Now comes the excitement. Now I'm ready to think about how I'm going to break this up with the shapes. And I think what I'll do is I'll come in here and do a straight line right here. And I think I'll do another one over here. Just, just kind of making this up. I want some of these to, leaves to be breaking through the line, too. So let's see what happens. Let's go right here. Through a leaf. There we go. Looks correct. 
crooked. Let's hope it's not crooked. And that's looking okay. And I might even continue this line up here. I kind of like this idea. Pull it out a bit. And I think I'll go up. So this is going to remain white paper, white paper. This is going to have the color in it. I want to have like three areas that are white. So I've got this corner, this corner. So I think what I'll do is come in here, maybe a little bit lower. This isn't a very, this isn't a lot of paper. Of course, oh, there's a tangent. We can't have that. So I'll go above that a bit. Come in here. Maybe about here. Oh yeah, I like that. And then we'll come up here. So now we have a third white area. Okay, now we're ready for the part that seems to complicate everybody's life. But this is how I've come up with this. I'll take just regular old masking tape, the least expensive kind from just a hardware store, Walmart, they all work. And this is some kind of a no-name one. There isn't even a name on it. But you'll notice how I've mired the corner here. That's important. And I'll just cut a little angle on this one, too. And I will run that corner up there. And I do want that to overlap. And I'm just going to run this along the edge of my line. And then what I like to do is I like to erase this line. If I can, I guess I got it a little close. But if I can get just a hair under that, I'll erase that line. Just because I like, I like to have a nice clean look there. Okay, now this one, we're, we're starting to get a little more complicated. On this one, I'm going to come in. In fact, I think I'll move this up just a little bit. Turn it a bit. So now I'm going to run a piece of tape until it touches that leaf. And then I'm going to just cut it. That's my breakout. Now I have to go around another corner. You can see we've made this pretty complicated here. Another miter. So I'm going to come up to that corner. Tape down to approximately where the leaf is. Now this time, I'm going to cut the miter at this angle. Start there and run across. Again, I may have gotten a little close here, but if I can, I'm going to erase some of these extra lines. There, that lightened up a bit. Now we've got this last little corner up here, and I'm going to take a chance that I Cut this close enough to be square. See, that's it's just that little corner. Just to move things ahead a little bit here. So we'll cut this off. In fact, that'll make my painting nice and stationary. I'll just run that down, erase this line and this line. Now one of the most important things that you can do is you need to burnish this. Okay, this next, next little tidbit of information is really, really important. Often when people use tape, they don't do what we call burnishing. That means you have to take a credit card or some kind of an edge like this and actually burnish this edge. I'm applying quite a bit of pressure right now. And when I do that, I'm assured that I'm going to have a perfect edge. I'm going to do it here, 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 over here, and over here. Now, very important.
important that you do that. And another unfortunate thing that often happens is people will buy this tape. It's called artist tape. It's a white, shiny, very expensive tape. Do not use artist tape. It's absolutely the worst possible tape for, for kind of a breakout like this because it will leak. It does not give you the firm hold that you need. So this less expensive tape and burnished with the credit card will have a perfect edge. Okay, so let's kind of reposition these. I often like to pull off these handles. Not handles, they're um, branches. Make my own branches. So now I'm looking so that they're not all lined up in a row. And I want some of them, in fact, break coming off the edge a bit. This is the one that is breaking into my line. This one is overlapping. Try to have at least one overlap. The other thing is, it's nice to have a variety of sizes. You know, I notice I have such a small paper, I'm working with relatively small leaves. But at the same time, I have a variety ranging from pretty small to about medium. So now we're ready to start um, working with the, the colors. And what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to put my paint out of here. I'm going to put this piece of paper back in position. And I'm going to put the leaves now in the position they are on my painting. Because this is, this is like my little model. Okay, before we start painting, we have to prepare by making our grapes. Now, this, I'm sure most of you remember when you were a young kid doing paper dolls. And uh, the truth be known, I never did this as a young kid. I, never, I don't know, I never, I missed that. But anyway, I know that there are people who did it and this is the way they did it. So you just simply roll this up and with the scissors, just simply cut out a circular form or an oval form. The grapes come in both of those. And sometimes it's kind of hard to cut them without freeing up the paper there. So you're not dealing with that big long thing. And you can see that when you do this, now you've got a whole bunch of grapes. So just go ahead and do that. So we're ready to now begin wetting the paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply take some nice clean water and wet in inside of my tape lines. And the hardest concept for everybody to get across is that they're not supposed to paint out here. Don't paint in these white areas. Now, if you can't remember that, you might want to put tape over the whole thing. Because <laughs> it's so funny, I tell everybody, now don't, don't paint out there. And they all go, okay. And then I walk around the room and people are painting on that outside area. It's just a natural instinct. Where I have a breakout, notice I'm just going straight across. I'm not painting into that at all. And now I'm going to take my palette. Now my palette is pretty much lined up like a color wheel. And I'm working mostly from transparent primary colors. So when I start painting this, I'm pretty much going to be working with some light colored leaves. And then I'm going to have it contrasted to a dark background. So I'm going to be working with my Aeolian yellow, my Windsor yellow, my quinacridone gold, and I might even put a little hint of some of this orange in it. So I'm going to do most of my leaves in that light color. So I'm going to start with this, and we put, what you do is you put the color on the back of the leaf. And I want to put this color on extremely rich, not watery, extremely rich. And see, I'm using my flat brush. And this flat brush, if I put it at an angle like this, is going to pick up all those veins, only the veins. And then if I want to put some variety here, I'm putting a little gold on them, and maybe just a little hint of some orange, too. So this one's ready. So I'm going to place it over in this area here, not over the tape. in such a position that it's close to the tape here and I've got a little opening there, then I'm just going to press it down, stamp it on there really good. 
So essentially what we're doing right now is we're creating a stamp. Let's take our next sleeve here, working on the back side. Again, going into these very, very heavily pigmented colors. We're talking lots of color here. Not much water, lots of color. Flat brush at an angle. So I'm, I'm putting down my Aeolian yellow first. Then I'm going to come in with some of this quinacridone gold. Add it here. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of the orange, Windsor orange, just to add a little more color here. And I might even go into um, a scarlet lake. This is a very bright orange. Let's do just a little of that too. This is what color they actually change in the fall. And now this is my breakout leaf. So my tape goes from here to here. This is the most difficult thing for people to do. So we're going to position this so that it's not going over the tape, but it's next to the tape edge. And now well, it's close. <laughs> Could have done a little better job, but too bad. So I'm just going to do one more, and then we're going to turn the camera off while I complete the rest of these sort of the idea of seen one, seen them all. So let me repeat one more time. I am using very, very heavy pigments. Not much water, but lots of pigment. Now throughout the painting, as you're working, be sure you keep a fine mister handy. Now this is a mister that has the narrow inner. And of course I don't want to ever get confused. I have a picture of my fine mister on the front here. So I'm going to keep him handy because I'm going to use this throughout the rest of the painting. We're ready now to come with some color. Now my natural instinct is to start with warm colors and then go to the cool colors. Same with I like to go with light to dark. So I'm going to start first of all with some light colors here. And we're going to Go around that. Now I'm thinking about how this pattern goes. See if I go off the top here and touch into the tape line, work my way down here, maybe touch this tape line again. Every time I touch the tape line I'm providing contrast. Now I might go a little in between moving across over here, negatively painting around this branch and going off the edge. So I've got a nice glow of the sun coming out. The next thing I'm going to do is come in with some nice warm color. This happens to be my quinacridone coral. It's a beautiful color from Daniel Smith, one I'm in love with. Now if you see any hard edges when you're doing this, get your mister out. So far I haven't seen any. Now I'm identifying the edge here as I'm bumping into it. I'm putting some of this beautiful pinky color right into the yellow, right across, bumping into this edge. But see some of the yellow I'm leaving pure. So I'm going on top, next to, again I'm going to bump into the edge here and maybe here. And notice what's happening. As I go over the yellow, it's turning into an orange. So by using all primaries, you really get a lot of nice variety. This is good. And I always like to bless the painting too, so we've got to have just a few of those little spots. So now this is going to suffice for my underpainting. Now it's time to put our circles down. So these are going to become the grapes. Now as I set these into this little bit of color, you'll notice that you can already see very subtle, very subtle. But what I like to do is I like to put a number of these down first. So these are the ones that are catching the light. Grapes, any object, a flower or anything, catches the light. So this is going to be my lightest ones. And then I'm going to take some color. So I'm going to take a brush and I've decided to make 
pinky grapes, pinky purpley grapes. So now I'm going to actually make like a circle here and I'm going to set this in to that paint. See how easy that is? I'll make another circle here. I'll put this down and it will pick up that color. So this is another form of creating a stamp. This cut piece of wax paper will hold that color into that shade. Now the colors that are the ones I did on the clear paper, I'm just going to paint in between them and the color is going to roll under there a little. But meanwhile, it's going to save a highlight. It's going to be light. So I'm going to put another one down here, going off the page. Now I want to get darker. So I'm going to take a deeper red. This is my alizarin crimson. It's a much deeper color. We're getting into the shadow areas now. So we'll make some grapes that are darker. Maybe I'll take that same darker color and go in between, bumping into the edge of the leaf here. So that's how we do it. It's really easy. So let's do another bunch of grapes hanging, oh, let's say over here. So I always put a few down to begin with that are on the light of the paper. Go to put these down and they're not sticking, that means your paper is getting dry. So get out your fine mister, give it a fine little mist of water. We want to keep the paper damp throughout, we don't want it to dry. So I put about four of them down there on the light. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint them like a circle, like the size of the grape. And I put this new circle down. Now I am not putting these circles on top of each other. They are only next to each other. Each one of these is separate. They're not overlapping. It probably looks like they're overlapping, but aha, they're not. <laughs> so now I'm going to get a little bit darker. This is my alizarin. Let's do some more over here, maybe some over here. And it looks like I'm pressing hard when I do this. I'm not. I'm just gently pressing it into this wet surface so that it will get moisture all around. And now I want to paint in between these ones that I laid on top there. There. Now I might even get darker yet. I can go into a little bit of alizarin crimson and add a little French ultramarine blue. French ultramarine blue fell out of my palette. Well, I'm just going to add a little magenta to it. That's got enough blue in it. What a riot. <laughs> I was on the road this week teaching at the Catholic school, so I think what happened is my paint fell out somewhere between here and the Catholic school. I'll have to look into that. So now I'm going to take some of this permanent magenta. I'm going to paint that in between here, get a little darker, and I'm going to paint it down here in between. So we're going to st already starting to build up some nice little darks here and there. And see what's happening? We're starting to create a pattern through the picture here. I think I might even add a few grapes in here. This is my magenta. Just put a few little dark grapes over here. Now we're at the stage where I want to start thinking about connecting this with a pattern of dark movement through it. So this is what I mean when I'm talking about a pattern of dark going through. So we're at the stage now where I want to still save some light of the paper. Very important. Even that little corner is important. And then we're going to design this dark pattern that's going to move throughout the picture. So I'm going to think about that right now. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to work with some soft blues and purples. So I want to get rid of this yellow on the palette. I don't want to get any yellow mixed in with my purples. So this is a little beautiful color I've just added to my palette. It's a manganese blue. And it granulates. I like the color a lot. So I'm going to go around.
around, bumping into the edge, going across here, probably get some greens now. Now here we're going off the page, bumping into this, and connecting. Let's come down here with this color. Bump into the grapes, go around the leaves, and maybe bump into the tape. That's important. We, we want to establish where the tape lines are. See, here's another concept I haven't really discussed with you. When you leave it light, this becomes a lost edge and your eye comes through. But when you get a crisp dark here, this is identification of the edge of the paper. We want that. So we have a lost edge, a found edge, a lost edge, a found edge. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to create some edges that are light and lost. And I haven't really got to my darks yet. We're just getting, just getting going here. And maybe this is a leaf hanging down in the, in the background. But mostly what I'm doing is establishing my pattern right now. So I'm going to come over here, identify the edge, cross over, negatively paint around that branch, and I'm painting between the leaves. So when I go around these stencils, I go from the leaf out, from the leaf out. Because if I go like this, it's going to push color underneath it. So always try to go out like this. And then I think what I'll do is go off the page over here. So now we've got kind of a nice rhythmical pattern running through here. But I want to get a little darker. And I think what I'll do is come in with my permanent magenta. Seems I don't have any French ultramarine right now. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna do some connecting with the permanent magenta. So I'm going to bump into the grapes, go from the grapes to the edge, bump into the tape, bump into the leaf, bump into the tape. And maybe I will go up here, bump into that edge. And I might get even darker. Don't be afraid to go a little darker because what's going to happen is it's going to dry so much lighter. So push it as far as you can. So now we've got the purples moving. Let's pull it down here, connect with these grapes, go around here. Maybe this is a shape of a leaf in the background. Bumping into the tape here. Coming through here, bumping into the grapes. So we're connecting everything, leaves to grapes to tape, the whole thing. Just run, run your eye throughout the picture, top of the leaves. And see, I don't want to kill all the blue. I want some blue, some light, and then this purple pattern. pretty good. To add just a little bit more of a textural look and to also do some of the tendrils that are hanging down, I'm going to cut off a little bit of this medical gauze and I'll enclose some of this with the video so you can try it yourself. And what I want to do is I want to create some interesting textural things happening. So I don't want this to look like a piece of gauze. I want it to be linear shapes. So I'm going to simply lay this in here and stretch it out into an interesting pattern. And it can go over the top of the leaves, it can even go over some of the grapes. But the important thing is you have to seed it now. See when I paint on top of this, then it will become these lines. I think I'll go back into this lovely blue. So this is just going to create some nice little lines. I'll cut another little hunk here. And maybe
maybe I'll use this. What I do, this is, I think this makes a nice connecting thing. So if I just set it on here and pull it across, it just becomes a nice little connecting unit. I always wonder if it's worth it, but I don't know. I kind of like it. If you're not into this, just forget it. But it has to be seated. So I'm going to put a little color on it. Same color that's under it, basically. And, it, and what happens is the gauze absorbs this color. It's just a cotton gauze. And then during the drying process, it transfers that color. Now this is really cool. I'm going to take and take these colors and I'm going to get this gauze really soaked with color. And I'm going to twist this around and this is going to become a tendril. And tendrils are weird. They're not perfect. They're not like little corkscrews. So now we have a little tendril hanging down. And sometimes I'll just simply gather up some of this extra gauze, put it into my palette here, get it all juiced up. Let me get even a little more color. That was pretty weak color. Huh. Now we're cooking. We'll twist this up. And we'll add a few more tendrils hanging down here. So I know that seems a little hokey, but it does add a nice little touch. So I'm, I'm just going to stretch a little bit more gauze here, and then I'm going to put a little salt on. This is the perfect place, perfect time to put the salt. The salt should go on just when the glisten is starting to leave. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of salt in some of these light areas. I don't like to put the salt into the real dark, dark shapes. I just like a little transition of the soft breaking up in in the light area. So I just threw a little salt in there, and then we get to come back and it's going to be Christmas morning. Okay, this is the fun part. This is like Christmas morning here. So we'll just completely unveil all this. And you can see the gauze, maybe you can, but the gauze did make some very nice little textural effects. The uh, Tendrils I was hoping for, eh, didn't work out too well. Let's see what's under the leaves. Ooh, nice contrast. Hey, I'm happy with that. That leaf must have blown off. There. Well, this is kind of cool. Look what happened. The uh, manganese seeped under and gave us a very nice, like an outline. Oh, my. Well, that worked quite well, I'd say. And then by taking one of my palette knives, I can just like scaling a fish here, scrape off all these circles. I'm sure you get them all. I've had occasions where a few of these got framed up, literally framed up. So we'll push those aside. So this is now like our underpainting. It's a raw piece of work that needs a lot more finishing, a lot more balancing of the values to make it work. And I'm also going to take off the tape to see what kind of little surprises we have there. I see we have a little surprise here. Whenever you have tape overlapping, I should have burnished that too, because that's going that's where it's going to leak. And I see I went I painted out beyond here. Aha, now we have to get creative. We have an interesting little shape here that we have to deal with. Peel this off. Yeah, that looks okay. There we go. Oh, it's nice to see those back to the white. So now it's time to take out our pencil and maybe think again about if we want to do a little bit more um, drawing. I think possibly coming in here with some more, I could even take one of these small leaves with some paint on it and re-stamp it, which I think I will. I think a leaf coming into this area would be nice. 
And then where this branch is, is meandering through, I'm going to come up here and draw that in. So it'll come across here. It's coming out over here. And here it is over here again, coming out. Well, maybe this will branch off again. And now I'm ready to think about adding some grapes. Now these grapes were formed, and they're just the ghost of the grape that's left. These were formed by the wax paper. But out here, I'm actually going to get some of these colors juiced up here. We have some of the pink, quinacridone, rose, lizard and crimson. So I can use this, this is the cork, I think it's very appropriate. This is the cork off the wine bottle. And I'm just going to go ahead and make some circles here that are going to turn into grapes. It's about the same size as these, it works out very well. So we'll just have now some grapes that are in the positive. This is going to be a positive shape next to the white in the background. Let's get some variation going here. I'm going to get some of the magenta, a little more red in that. We'll keep them a nice bright color. But let's vary the color. And I think I'll come in with a brush and then vary it even more. Let's take a little bit of that manganese blue. It's not a real powerful color, but it is a beautiful color. Let's blue that up a bit. That cork has got an interesting little white, leaves little white shapes. I like that. Like a built-in highlighter. Pretty nice. Add a few stems here. Very nice. Well, I could just start stamping and going crazy, but you get the idea. Now, I also can do a stamp. This is just a little eraser. And if I want to, I can put some paint on this and stamp a few of these. See? A little bit smaller ones. Just simply put the paint on, stamp it. <laughs> this is too much fun. And so what I'm going to do is out here where we're into the positive shape, I'm going to wet it first just with some clean water. Clean. <laughs> so over here I'm going to wet the shape, bumping into the leaf so I'll go around that. Okay, now just this much is wet. And generally I like to make this in kind of a burnt orange. This is my quinacridone burnt orange. I'm going to add just a little bit of the pink to it to warm it up. So I'm going to drop that color in along the edge here and let it roll up. This is the reason I wet it first, because I want it to roll. And this way you still save a little light in there and you get the look of uh, the highlight. See, the, and now it looks round. If you paint on dry paper, everything looks flat. So it's very important to make this look round. So I'm coming in a little bit from each side, letting it roll in. And then I'm going to come in with some magenta to make it a little deeper along the edge. And see, this is a designer painting. So this probably isn't the actual color, but it looks nice with the painting. So we're just going to make it match the painting here. So now we have that. Now as it goes into this area, I'm just going to let this edge melt out. And now what I want to do is I want to make this light against dark because this is dark against light. So now if I come out here and make this dark, see how that's going to pop out that branch. Now I'm bumping into a grape, so I'm going to paint around the grape, pop that out. As I move over here, I'm going to go around the grape again, bump into that. And I might even 
get just a little bit darker there. I'll add a little blue to that too. So I'm just adding a little manganese, cooling it off a bit. Now let's go to the other side. It's a beautiful light area, but I need a contrast. So now I'm going to come in here with my purple and bump into this side. But see, now we have two hard edges. This one defining this in this edge, which is bumping into that light area. So I'm going to wet my brush. Starting out here in this wet area, I'm going to come in and soften this edge so that it's totally lost. So see, we've managed to pop this out but we've also lost the edge. Now we've got to cut all these other little hard edges to deal with too. So we've managed to save some of that nice light area, but we've also managed to pop that out. Now here we have one leaf in front of the other leaf. So here's a case where we're going to want to get a, make this leaf look like it's coming forward and this one look like it's going back. So I'm going to take, we've got these nice greens here that we we got from the manganese blue. So I'm going to take a little yellow, mix it in with the manganese, and I'm just going to try to figure out, maybe I'll just put blue down there, because the blue when it goes over the yellow will turn into a green. So now what we've done is we've made one of these leaves darker than the other. So now this is coming forward and this is going back. And then we're just going to lose the edges here so it's soft. See, that was easy. And you can just keep going darker and darker until you're comfortable with it. I'm going to go into, I grabbed another palette now because I wanted some ultramarine blue. And then I'm going to put a little bit of magenta in there. But I'm basically going to keep this on the cool side. And what I want is I want this particular color, cool. I just think that would be nice, cool versus warm. So we're just going to do a little interesting wrap around here with this cooler color. Crossing over here, but we'll leave it light against dark, dark against light. Always finding those opportunities to make those changes. And then when you do have that change, you just have to soften it with water so that it doesn't become too stylistic. There, that's looking kind of nice. We might even have to add a few more down here. Here we are, it's the next day. So it's, it's always good to look at your painting with fresh eyes. So as I'm looking now, I see some things are working quite well. My favorite part so far is the transition here where we have the light against dark and out here the dark against light. And I did work on carrying the branch through. And one of the things I felt would be a nice addition would be to do these twisty, turny, interlocking vines. So I did add another vine here in, with even smaller shapes. And then I added some grapes up here coming in just to break up that white space. And then I thought some twisty, turny, wrapping things here with a few grapes hanging down here would be good. And if you'll notice in here now, I did start developing the dark pattern through here. So the dark pattern kind of rolls through here, and now it needs more development here, and I saved that to share with you. So I'm going to be taking the same colors. We're looking at the permanent magenta, and I found my French ultramarine blue. Did a little research. It was in the bottom of some bag. So just coming in with a combination of a little bit of ultramarine and a little bit of permanent magenta, we're going to do some negative painting now. This is going to turn into a grape, so obviously I'm painting around that shape. And then I'm bumping into what's going to be the leaf shape and then the stem holding the leaf shape. So each time I do this, you're going to, it's going to pop out the contrast. And I did draw these with a pencil because I'm not necessarily one of these 
negative painters that can do all this intuitively. I'm just a lot more comfortable if I can have a little drawing to guide me. Now as I move along here, I'm going to get warmer. I might even go into some pink. So I'm going to warm this up a bit. See, I am moving into an area that's much warmer. So what we need to do now is to develop these grapes by negatively painting in the grapes and the shapes in between. So let's start with this area up here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and generate some grapes that are behind. So it could, just, could be easier if you just start drawing in some of the grapes that are already here in the ghost-like image. And now if, I, if there was another grape behind here, it would go around here. And here. Now if, we, if there's another grape behind here, you'd be able to see it like that. So that's the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to take and mix up a great white color. Now to keep it kind of warm. We're just going to paint these, the grapes that are behind the ones that are here. So see now there's a grape in, in behind, in the shadow. Here's that other one I drew. There'd be a little grape, a little corner of a grape right here. And what I don't want you to do is start filling in all this. You have to think of it in terms of a grape. Here's a grape. If it were complete, it would go around like this. So you're only going to paint that little bit right there. Now you've just painted another grape. So, so far we've painted a grape here, here, and here. If there's another grape here, it would go from here around this grape, around this grape, over here, over here. See, there's another grape. So that's the best way to start, just simply painting these individual grapes that are in the background. Then when you bump into something like a twining branch, the edge of another grape, the edge of the vine, you bump into all those, that's negative painting. I want to evaluate my leaves. Am I happy with those leaves? Are they looking the way I, the best they possibly can? And as I look at this leaf right here, I think this is fabulous. It's got that great green outline. It's got a little blush of that orange, the bright yellow, the golden yellows. That one worked out good. The, and this one did. This is okay. But you know what? You don't have to limit yourself to what's happening here. If you want to increase the color, darken it, lighten it, brighten it, you can. So this is the leaf I added in your absence. And it looks different than all the other leaves because I made it green. Yellow, of course, wouldn't have been a good contrast against the white, so I made it green. But now I want it to have more of a golden yellow color. So here's all I have to do. Because we're working with a transparent watercolor, all I need to do is come in and glaze in whatever color I want. So this is a little Windsor yellow. I'm also going to put in some of this golden color. And I'm going to make the leaf look like it belongs to the rest of them here. These were the colors I originally used when I did the underpainting for those other leaves. A glaze is when you put a transparent color over the top of a dry surface. That's what we're doing. The surface is dry. I'm just adding a little. And I'm even going to add a little bit of that orange. That was the Windsor orange I added. So you always have to evaluate your painting. What does this painting need so it has good balance, contrasting values, nice movement, you know, big shapes, little shapes. Oh, I do like that better. That, that just feels a lot more comfortable. I could even add just a little hint of that orangey color. There we go. Now we're cooking. Now it feels like it's part of the painting. This leaf over here, because it's in a light area, we could actually make it darker. So I could go into some of my Antwerp. 
before. I could take French Ultramarine, which seems to be the blue I've been using, and add a little yellow to it. And if I want to, I can make this leaf a little bit darker as a contrast, particularly over here in the light area. So by adding a little darker value, then I'm going to wet my brush and just kind of pull that in there. I don't want to just completely paint the leaf. That would not be good. But I'll just go a hair darker now on the edges. See, these were made by an actual stamp, so we don't want to lose all that, that beautiful look. But it would be nice just to have a little more contrast. There. That was easy. So now we have dark against light, light against dark, and so on. Well, in your absence, I did go in and do just a little bit more working on the grapes. Actually, there's still, it still has a little more that needs to be done. Okay, for my last death defying act, I'm going to share with you another. This is a, a wonderful trick, and I use it for a lot of different reasons. But it's another form of stenciling. So this is uh, just the kind of paper that runs through a photocopier, and it's called transparency film. And I'm going to take a pen. This is the pen I use when I'm doing on-location painting. So any kind of pen that will write on plastic. And what I want to do is I want to take an exact copy of the grape that I'm using. And it seems like once you start working with the grape shape, you pretty much stick with it. So my grapes are pretty much consistently this, this shape right here. So now I'm going to take a scissors, and I'm going to go in here and cut out this grape. And as I put this grape down, what I can do now is simply take a sponge. This is a cosmetic sponge. With, there's no uh, oils or lotions in it. We're going to squeeze it out, make sure that it's clean. <laughs> no surprises. And now I'm thinking about the light hitting this. So as I come in here, look at how nice that is and lift away that back to the white of the paper. So this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go around and I'm going to capture the light as it's hitting a number of these grapes. And it really pulls, oh, I just love that. It pulls back the light and it really captures the light. Keep you all awake too. I don't know why it's so noisy. Now let's, let's say you decide to add a grape that wasn't there earlier. I'll go up in this corner here, and I can add another grape here if I want. So this is a grape going behind. I'll put another grape over here. Another thing that I think is a great idea, and that is the use of webbing spray. Now the webbing spray is available places like Michael's, and what it does is it comes out like a spray. I always turn it over to test it first, and you never know where it's going to go. It could go just about anywhere. But you can see it gives these squiggly, wonderful, free lines. And to me, this is just a perfect complement to the freedom that's in here. So I'm just going to gently stay back, give it a little bit of a random line. I always say this is kind of a spray and pray deal. I think a little bit more up here would be nice. Oh, perfect. Now something I forgot to share with you, and this is important, if you get too close with this spray, Look at what happens. It kind of looks like the old Palmer method back in the grade school days. So I always stay back far enough, just a little gentle spray like that. And you can get this wonderful, casual, random line. So 
So we're completed now with this lesson. And I'll have to take a look at it in a mat, see how it looks. I've met my goals quite well. Most pleased with the dark pattern that's lacing its way through. And I'm also very pleased with the light pattern that is still evident. And I think there's a nice balance between the areas that are within the structure and then the ones that are out in the white. So I hope things go well for you. I've named this lesson Grape Expectations. And very few people have the grapes of wrath when they do it. So I hope things go well for you.